The child star curse is a story we have heard time and time again. The young star discovers their innate gift of performing, or they have an image that perfectly represents a producer's vision. But children are naive and are very susceptible to mistreatment. Then the parents might abuse their power over the child. They might feel entitled to their money, or sometimes they're just jealous that their child is more successful than they ever were. Shia LaBeouf's story follows a similar narrative, but recently we found out that it might all be a lie. A sensationalized narrative to not only make money, but try and protect him from his wrongdoings. Shia's downward spiral is different than most because to this day, we have no idea what is real and what is a distraction from the truth. Stay hydrated. Shia was the son of two starving artists. Shayna Said and Jeffrey LaBeouf could never find an audience for their work, sending them straight into poverty as a family. His mother would end up selling fabrics and jewelry in a poverty-stricken area of Echo Park, Los Angeles, while his father, a former Vietnam veteran, would sell hot dogs and perform as a street clown to get by. On top of their financial struggles, Shia's father was a convicted sex offender and a heroin addict which was far from the ideal role model that Shia needed growing up as an only child. As if life wasn't hard enough, his father was admitted into rehab when Shia was just nine years old, leaving him and his mother extremely vulnerable. While living with his mother in a Los Angeles motel, Shia overheard a man R-word her. Not being able to do anything about it at such a young age, this tragedy caused a great deal of anger to build in his young soul. To this day, Shia sleeps with a gun under his pillow because of the incident, stating, I've always thought somebody was coming in my whole life. His parents were too prideful to accept food stamps and welfare. Shia knew early on that he would need to find a way to make money for him and his family, or steal to get what he wanted. His first run-in with the law occurred in 1995 when he was only nine years old, getting caught attempting to steal a pair of Nike Cortez shoes. Then a couple years later, he also got caught trying to steal a Game Boy. His parents knew he needed a creative outlet to express himself and keep him out of trouble, so Shia turned to stand-up comedy, which was a perfect fit for a kid known as the class clown amongst his peers. Performing at local LA comedy clubs at the age of 10, he instantly stood out thanks to his edgy, adult sense of humor, going on stage and picking apart the drunk men and women in the audience, often starting his set with, Hey motherfuckers, it's time for some jokes. Shia thrived in stand-up, but it wasn't going to pay his family's bills or get him the sneakers he wanted. He needed to think bigger, and that's exactly what he did. On a trip to Malibu with his dad in 1996, Shia met a kid wearing expensive clothing that he could only dream of affording. Shia asked him, what do you do? Which led to the kid responding with, I'm an actor. And that was all Shia needed to hear. Shia began looking up talent agencies in the yellow pages, calling them and pretending he was his own manager. Although they weren't buying the shtick, one of the agents was charmed enough and she took a shot on Shia and signed him, quickly propelling his career and helping him earn small roles in commercials. It's been tough, very tough. Yet you kids are eating lots and lots of Oreo O's. Yeah. What's that? He also landed some minor roles in Freaks and Geeks and X-Files. Somehow, he found a way to make it in the spotlight that his parents always desired, with no formal acting or training whatsoever. After grinding smaller roles for a few years, he would finally get his big breakthrough in the year 2000, landing the lead role in the show Even Stevens on the Disney Channel. And you're, and you're not shy. I read somewhere for the Even Stevens at the audition, you scared the other actors who were waiting to audition by telling them, got so it wrapped bad. up, it's mine. <laughs> I, I wanted it so bad, I would like walk around, I was like, listen man, I don't know what you're auditioning for, I already got the part, you know? And I did, I eventually got it, it was all luck. Shia played the role as Lewis, who is viewed as immature, rude, lazy, selfish, carefree, and extremely mischievous. He concocts elaborate schemes and inventions to make his life easier. This show, as well as Lizzie McGuire, were the first two Disney Channel live action shows to pave the way for the iconic early 2000s Disney Channel hits. Even Stevens was a smash success. Shia would go on to win an Emmy Award for his role as Lewis Stevens in 2003 and became a household name thanks to the show, with directors in the industry comparing his acting potential to stars like Tom Hanks and Gene Wilder. The show would have gone on longer than three seasons, but Disney famously has the 65 rule, where they will cancel a show no matter what after 65 episodes. Despite Shia having this big breakthrough, 
His life was far from glamorous. He had to live closer to where the show was being filmed, so he left his mother's house to go live with his father. He says his father was abusive, both mentally and physically. One time, Jeffrey allegedly held a gun to Shia's head in a Vietnam flashback. On top of that, the two lived in a $45 per night motel while he was filming Even Stevens. Disney Channel was known to pay their cast pennies compared to how popular the shows were. But whatever Shia was getting paid, he was using it to keep his family above water. He was merely surviving. Riding the success of Even Stevens, in April of 2003, Shia's career would continue to reach new heights with the release of the film, Holes. The film generated $71.4 million worldwide and would open the door for Shia to blockbuster roles on the big screen. He started popping up as a tertiary character in a big film every year. Dumb and Dumberer, Charlie's Angels, I, Robot, Constantine, Bobby. This led to him earning lead roles in The Greatest Game Ever Played and Disturbia, which grossed $118 million in worldwide box office. But one role was about to take him to superstar heights. Transformers. In 2007, Transformers grossed $700 million in global box office. For those that don't know, American action films will often get worldwide praise and send those actors into lifetime A-list status. Shia did two of these films in one year, the second being Indiana Jones, which did nearly $800 million in global box office. Transformers 2 did over $800 million in global box office. Shia was on top of the world. His life appeared to be perfect in the public eye. He was beloved by everyone. He successfully successfully saved his family from generational poverty and by 21 was arguably set for life. But unfortunately for Shia, his past was beginning to creep up on him. LaBeouf was arrested and spent two days in jail after attempting to stab a neighbor in Van Nuys. In the very same year that Shia was hitting the red carpet with Megan Fox for the premiere of Transformers, he would spend two nights in jail for attacking his neighbor with a deadly weapon. Anger and alcoholism a result of his troubled childhood, was starting to take over his life. Arrested in November of 2007 for misdemeanor criminal trespassing while refusing to leave a Walgreens, he described the incident, my logic was off to say the least. Again, I'm on the sauce. By on the sauce, he means alcohol, his go-to vice that would become a big problem later on. He was arrested on suspicion of drunk driving in Hollywood in the summer of 2008, and in 2011 he got involved in a brawl outside of a Vancouver bar. He was slowly starting to derail, like many of the child stars that came before him. He earned $15 million for his role in the third Transformers movie. Money was no longer the motivation for him. He didn't need to grind anymore. He decided to step away from the franchise and the millions of dollars it would have continued to produce. He started to chase roles that were more artistic and character driven. In June of 2012, he made a nude appearance in the music video for the song, Fior Piano. The video depicts a man and a woman locked in a never-ending cycle of addiction and desire. Then just a few years later in 2014, Rob Cantor created a theatrical performance by the name of Shia LaBeouf. The lyrics describe Shia as a murderous cannibal. Shia makes an appearance at the end of the music video for this song, ominously applauding in the audience all by himself, which would later turn into a viral meme. Now, this performance wasn't really meant to be taken seriously, but the motivation behind it was unclear and overall just seemed to be pretty bizarre behavior for an A-list actor who was being deemed the next big thing by Steven Spielberg just a few years prior. It was in 2014 where Shia was truly never the same. Up until now, he had some arrests, some weird acting roles, but now people were really starting to question everything they thought they knew about him. It all started with this hashtag I am sorry art exhibition. Uh, w w would you mind taking the bag off? Could you take the bag off your head? Can I take the bag off your head? Uh, wow. Okay. <laughs> it's you. Hi, Shia. I Am Sorry was hosted in Los Angeles in early 2014. Shia was dressed in a suit with a bag over his head that read, I am not famous anymore. Fans and spectators paid to sit into a tiny empty art gallery where he was seated, and one at a time they filed in and they were allowed to say whatever they wanted right to his face. Oddly enough, he didn't say anything back the entire day. All he did was sit there and cry. This exhibit was a follow-up to his strange red carpet appearance for the premiere of the erotic art film Nymphomaniac, where he wore that exact same paper bag. Conspiracy theorists said that this was an Illuminati embarrassment ritual. His fans said that it was genius performance art, but most people thought it was another story of a child star gone mad. This stunt came just months before his most famous arrest. 
Shire was at a local New York City bar where he was pounding whiskey and watching the World Cup. He stumbled into a New York cabaret where Alan Cumming and Michelle Williams were performing. LaBeouf was smoking cigarettes inside the theater and shouting obscenities. He even allegedly slapped Cumming's butt as he walked by him during the performance, and cops arrested him during intermission. At this point, nobody really knew why Shia was behaving like this. You seem to have gone crazy since the last time I saw you. Is it that does true? seem that way, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess I have. But he opened up to Interview Magazine after these antics, which changed some people's perspective of him. The only thing my father gave me that was of any value to me is pain. This was revealed by Shia in a 2014 interview, pulling back the curtain on the darkness of his childhood. My greatest and my worst memories are with my father. All my major trauma and major celebration came from him. Shia was living the classic example of a child star who was manipulated and scarred by his parents. Suddenly, his antics and public freakouts made sense, but Shia's closing statement of this interview was maybe too transparent. I've been a runner my whole life, running from myself, whether to movies or drinking and drugging or f***ing calamity or whatever it is. I've always been running. I'm a dude who loves delusion. It's why I love being an actor. I never have to actually look at myself or be faced with my shit or take responsibility. This statement, shockingly honest and self-aware, would come back to haunt him years later. 2014 was also Shia's last major film, Fury, alongside Brad Pitt, which secured nearly $200 million in the box office. He became too risky for production studios to work with, not knowing when his next public fiasco will be, which was in 2015 when he was arrested for public intoxication in Austin, Texas. He also managed to outdo his previous meme with a new one. He filmed a 30-minute motivational speech in front of a green screen and posted it on YouTube in which the internet had a field day with. But his next art project was inspired by Donald Trump's inauguration in 2016. This one would test Shia's sanity. Shia's art group launched an art installation in New York, just outside the Museum of the Moving Image. The project was called He Will Not Divide Us, and the goal was to livestream every single day of Trump's first term as president, bringing people together in a time of division, chanting the phrase, He Will Not Divide Us, in front of a webcam set up outside the museum. Unfortunately for Shia, this project only lasted a couple of days before internet trolls and 4chan users would turn up in real life, appearing on the live stream with the intention of pissing off the actor and trolling his project, which is exactly what they did. Realizing that people were just going to keep showing up and trolling his message, Shia reimagined the project. Instead, he put a He Will Not Divide Us flag up in the middle of nowhere, with a 24-hour live stream so people can go online and look at it. 4chan users were determined to ruin his project, and it only took them 10 hours to do it. They tracked Shia's most recent location using photos that he was tagged in on Instagram. Then they analyzed wind patterns, the sounds of frogs singing in the background, and the constellations in the sky to figure out where this flag was waving. And in 10 hours, they took down the flag, replaced it with a MAGA hat and a Pepe the Frog shirt, and trolled Shia off the internet for a while. But before his exit, we got some bars. I thank God Almighty that I'm balling slightly I say amen, I'm just amen who's chasing elation In my occupation, who's patient Who comes from below the basement, from the pavement Then I got an agent, then I done made it Past Tom Hanks replacement, god damn my life's amazing Shia got married to his wife Mia Goth which seemed to calm him down for a little bit, until he was arrested again in 2017, this time for public intoxication, disorderly conduct, and obstruction. He was sentenced to 100 hours of community service, one year probation, and was also court-ordered to attend a drug rehab facility. In this rehab, he was instructed to write and reflect on his life, which may have been just what Shia needed to dig himself out of the hole that he was in at the time. And you wrote this movie while in court-ordered rehab? Yes, sir. Yeah. 
yeah. which is, a, did you say, hey, I got this time, I'm gonna be in here, I'm gonna do this? Was this something you set out to do? Well, they said you have PTSD, you gotta start writing. This is how you get to the solution. The only way out is through. So I started writing all these dark chapters, you know, uh, of my life, and it wound up being this, this script form thing. Sent it to my friend, became a movie. Honey Boy would eventually hit theaters in 2019, telling the story of Shia's childhood and his relationship with his father. His self-reflections in court-ordered rehab had transformed into a full-length feature film, completely revitalizing his career that he thought was over. However, before moving forward with the script, he needed his dad's approval, which wasn't the easiest thing to do since he hadn't spoken to his father in nearly seven years. Initially, when he reached out to his dad about the script, he said that Mel Gibson would be playing him in the film, helping to convince his dad to give the movie the green light. Little did Jeffrey know, this was a blatant lie, and Shia would be taking on the role of his abusive father. We weren't on good terms, so... I lied to him and told him, hey, Mel Gibson's gonna play you son right here. <laughs> <laughs> Honey Boy successfully got Shia his reputation back. There was never a doubt that he was a great actor, but this film made it seem like Shia reconciled with his troubled past and was ready to change for the better going forward. If you can tap into how you can use your suffering to help other people, that is maximum, maximum joy. <laughs> I always thought joy was, oh, I get this and then I'm happy, or I do this and then I'm happy, or I get her and then I'm happy, or I make that and then I'm happy, or they respect me and then I'm happy, or I always thought happiness was to be acquired by the things I would gain from life. That's why I was always grabbing. If I knew early on that happiness actually is in me offering all of my suffering up for other people as, some, as an instructive thing or as something that could benefit man, then I maybe would have lived my life differently. Unfortunately, this redemption only lasted temporarily, as more harsh realities would get exposed. One of Shia's co-stars on Honey Boy was an actress slash singer-songwriter by the name of FKA Twigs. Shia's short marriage was already in murky waters, and the two would instantly hit it off. They started dating shortly after the filming of Honey Boy in 2018. Shia had a history of rocky romantic relationships, yet this relationship turned out to be more toxic and dangerous than the rest, culminating in a lawsuit at the end of 2020, where FKA Twigs sued Shia for sexual battery, assault, and infliction of emotional distress. She would detail terrifying situations he put her in. He was driving recklessly, removing his seatbelt, and threatening to crash unless she professed her love for him. She also says that Shia gave her an STD when he knew he was infected. FKA coming out also empowered pop singer Sia to come out as well, stating that she too had experienced abuse from Shia, calling him a pathological liar. People found old footage of Shia after an argument with his ex Mia Goth, saying that he was about to kill her. If I'd have stayed there, I'm, I, I would kill her. At the time, Shia didn't address the allegations. Instead, he promoted his new movie, Padre Pio. We're making a film, uh, me, Abel Ferrer, and Willem Dafoe are making a movie uh, called Padre Pio about the great Padre Pio. After that, we didn't hear from him until the film was completed. Not only did Shia shift his focus to this role, but he shifted his focus to finding God through Christianity. This film had a lot of publicity, and it was during the mid-2022 rollout that Shia appeared on various podcasts and interviews, where he kind of addressed the accusations. The, the news that had come out has been like, I've been abusive to women, and I've been shooting dogs, and I've been willingly giving women STDs, and like, there's, it's disgusting. It's depraved. And when I look at this Me Too environment, there's not a whole lot of dudes that are taking accountability. You know, I f***ed up bad, bad, like crash and burn type It hurt a lot of people. He admits to a lot of wrongdoings, nothing specifically, but both of these interviews Shia allowed himself to be extremely vulnerable. He admitted to the monster that he was. He admitted that getting back with Mia and having their first daughter allowed him to live for a greater purpose. He also admits to lying about his father. Like with my dad, I want to hit my dad up. Now here's a man who I, I done vilified on a grand scale. I put all this shit in the street, you know? Uh, and used him, juiced my dad is like, this is the reason I'm foul out here. You know, I'm come from this wayward upbringing and you know, my dad is the reason I'm such a f up. You know, he's a, a biker and a wild man and a criminal and a da 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 and abusive and blah. And I, and I wrote this narrative, which was just nonsense. My dad was so loving to me my whole life. Fracture, sure. Crooked, sure. Like wonky for sure, but never was not loving. Was never was not there. He was always there. He was always there. And I done done a world press tour about how he was as a man. My dad never hit me. Never. He spanked me once, one time. 
And the story that gets painted in Honey Boy is like this dude was like abusing his kid all the time. You know, my dad tried to keep me from smoking cigarettes. That's when he spanked me. Honey Boy was literally his redemption arc that got him into good graces with the public. He lied about the whole thing, threw his own father under the bus so that people would root for him again. It's extremely honorable that Shia has come forward and admitted to his wrongdoings, but it justifies a lot of people's claims who said he was a manipulator and a liar in the past. It's very tough to realize what about Shia is real and what is being lied about for his benefit. This is why a lot of people in Hollywood just stay away from him. You just don't know what stories about him are true. I mean, him admitting to the lies makes me even question all the information in this video. He has admitted in the past that he loves not having to face the responsibility of his actions. All that we can hope for is for the sake of his family, his daughter, that this time what he is saying is true. Hopefully his spiritual journey has earned him a new lease on life and maybe this time he is actually a changed man.